let's try to understand the target encoding method very clearly so target encoding is one of the feature encoding techniques one of the very powerful feature encoding techniques where we will convert the categorical variables into a numeric variable we have seen other other techniques in the past i will leave a link to those videos also in those techniques we we saw various approaches of converting right so what is special about target encoding is we are going to convert this categorical data so we have here we have a data set which represents the the days the days of the week and the temperature data like we have whether whether it's it's hot or warm or cold these kind of temperatures and whether the kids played on those combinations of day and temperature so we have this data now we want to convert for the machine learning algorithms to use it we want to convert these two columns into a numeric form now what is what makes target encoding special here is it will convert in, in into such a number such that those number kind of represents what is the probability that it is going to either the children are going to either play or not play all right so we are, we are going to convert it to probability scores basically how do we do that so let's take one variable at a time let's let's start with the day variable all right so in day there are three possible values it could either be a monday or it could be a tuesday or a wednesday only three possible values here all right so to get the numeric equivalent of monday what we will do is we will count the number of the number of occurrences of mondays the number of occurrences of mondays where where the children played the children played on those days divided by the number of occurrences the total number of occurrences of mondays all right you can also simply write this as you can also simply write this as the count of occurrences where where when 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 it was a monday the target the target value was equal to p the target was whether they played or not the value was p divided by the total count of so this is the count of mondays where target was p divided by the total count of mondays all right so totally how many counts we have we have a monday over here here and here so the, the denominator in this case is going to be denominator is 3 divided by out of these three mondays how many days people played the children played so we have one monday here and here all right so 2 divided by 3 is going to be the case where we are going to substitute the value 2 by 3 in places where mondays occur so the day number equivalent of day numeric form of day day wherever monday occurs we write 2 by 3 2 by 3 and 2 by 3 all right now what is the what is going to be the value for tuesday totally how many tuesdays exist we have one tuesday here let me use a slightly different color we have one tuesday here we have another tuesday here so denominator is going to be 2 for tuesdays all right and out of these two tuesdays both of them is not played all right so the numerator is going to be 0 so we will substitute all tuesdays with 0 and wednesday it's going to be zero there's only one occurrence of wednesday and on that the 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 denominator is one for wednesday let me use a different color perhaps so one for wednesday the numerator is zero no played here so for wednesday the value is zero so this will be the numeric equivalent this is going to be the numeric equivalent for for day day variable day column likewise can you think of how to do it for the temp column the second column over here we have three possible values again hot warm and cold so the value for hot the value for hot hot would be what would be what would be the denominator how many occurrences of hot occurs so here's one hot another hot over here all right only two occurrences out of these two so denominator is 2 out of these two occurrences only one instance we have played so 1 by 2 so wherever there is hot we will write 1 by 2 1 by 2 likewise we will do for the other two possible values also warm and cold now if you think about it if you think about it all these ratios all these ratios we have computed are nothing but probability so what is this if it is a monday there is a 2 by 3 chance that the children are going to play likewise if it is a tuesday we have less data here in this case in a real world data set you will have many many more instances or rows in your data set so these probability values is going to be more realistic this is a very small number and zero is very very easy to occur in this case 
But in real data, zeros should typically not be occurring if there is sufficient, sufficient observations. All right, so here for Tuesday, there is a zero chance. There is only two occurrences on both of the Tuesdays that people, the children did not play. All right, now let's look at another case. What if the response variable y here contains more than two categories, two possible values? Previously, we had only two possible values here. Y can be either played or not played. Now, in this case, Y can have three possible values. It could be A, it could be B, it, or it could be C. Three possible values. What would we do in this case? So, what we can do here is, we can create a version of, a version of this column, the day column. In this case, we are considering only day column. So, a version of the day column for each possible value of the categorical variable. So, we are constructing a, constructing a target encoded variable for A and a target encoding variable for B. We are not doing it for C. We will see the reason for doing that shortly. Now, what would we, how would we handle it for numeric data? We have seen two possible values for Y, but what happens if there are the Y's and numeric data will come, come back to that shortly. All right, we will see how to handle numeric data also for Y. Now, for this specific case where we have three possible values. Now compute the same same way, right? So you come, you take the value for A alone and compute it. So the denominator for Monday is, so there are how many occurrences? One, two, three occurrences of Monday. Three occurrences of Monday. Out of the three, there are two occurrences for A, column A, value A, right? So two by three. So wherever Monday occurs, the value is going to be two by three for the A column, for the A column. 2 by 3 here also. Whereas for the B column, there are 3 occurrences of Mondays. For 3 occurrences of Mondays, out of this only one column, one value is B. Right? So we will have 1 here. So 1 by 3 here, 1 by 3 here. So wherever it is, wherever is Monday, for the B column, there is only one occurrence. There is a one third of chance of B occurring here. That's why we have 1 by 3. Now we can have a C column also, day, day underscore C. If that is the case, we can compute this probability for C also. So, the denominator is going to be 3 again in this case. Out of the 3 occurrences, there is 0 occurrence of C. In this case, there is 0 occurrence. All right. Now, this is not needed. Why? Because you can construct this C column as 1 minus day underscore A minus day underscore B. That is nothing but day C. So, the information that is getting contributed by day underscore C, this column, can be written as a formula of day A and day B, right? So this information is sort of sort of redundant. So we typically do not create this. If you create this, no problem at all. You can still you can still use it. But if you are building it, using it for algorithms such as linear regression, linear regression, linear regression requires the the data to be independent of each other. All right. So since C can be expressed as a combination of A and B. This is sort of not bringing in new information to the model, so we will not use it. All right, so this is not needed in this case. Now let's look at how to handle for numeric data. If your y here, y column here is numeric data, how would you handle this? Now what we can do here in this case is we do something called what is called as the mean encoding. Mean encoding. So. So what we have been doing the previous cases also in a sense it's called mean mean encoding. Well, we will come to that. So what we will do is whenever it is Monday, whenever it is Monday, so we have three instances of Monday, take these observations, take these observations, compute the mean, the mean of the value of Monday is going to be mean of whenever it is going to be Monday, right? So it's going to be. 10,000 plus 11,000 plus 12,000 divided by 3 is going to be 11,000. All right, the mean of these three values is 11,000. So wherever it is Monday, we are going to write it as 11,000. 11,000. All right. Likewise, when it is Tuesday, take all the Tuesdays and compute the mean and substitute here. All right. So it's 8,000, 8,000 plus 8,500 by 3. So I don't know what that that value is. So 8k plus 8k, these two values, 8k plus 8k, plus 8.5k, 8.5k by 3. Substitute this value over here, here and here. Likewise, for Wednesday, we have just one instance here, so we can simply write it as 7000. 
So that's what mean encoding is all about and this is also sometimes called as likelihood 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 encoding all right because these values here represent the probability probability of what value the what value the y column the meter column here in this case is going to take now this is called as mean encoding the same thing what what we are we are taking the mean here this is what we have been doing for categorical variable also if you take wherever it was playing here right if you take these values wherever it was playing if you take as 1 and not playing as zeros playing as 1 not playing as zeros not playing as zeros if you take the mean suppose if you want to compute it for monday right you have three mondays here so you take these three values you take these three values and take the mean that would be that would be what 1 plus 1 plus 0 divided by 3 right you take the mean of these three values which is 2 by 3 and that is what we wrote here isn't it so this entire approach is also simply called as mean encoding regardless of whether encoding encoding regardless of whether you are going to be using it for categorical data or numeric data all right so th that's all the whole mathematics behind this is now one problem with this approach approach right when you are using this approach for feature encoding on machine learning problems one uh, one problem with this approach is this kind of causes what is called as the data leakage. What we mean by that is we are kind of looking at the answers. So these are the answers. This is the Y and this is the X. Using X in machine learning problems, we will use the data from X to predict the Y. We will use the X to predict, predict the Y. And here in this case, we are using the Y data to encode the values of x, we are sort of looking into the answers and bringing in the data, the information from the answers into x. Isn't it? So this is going to be telling us what the probability is going to be. What the probability, suppose if it is Monday, what is the probability that the value of meter in this case, the, prob the value of y in this case is going to be, which is sort of leaking the data, the leaking the answers into the learning data, isn't it? So that is kind of considered as data leakage now that is okay now if you if your pure aim is to predict into the future what the values of this y is going to be for specific value suppose it was monday again here in the future date it is going to be monday again here you will know at this point at the, at the new instance you will know what the value of monday is so you will substitute so here we we, we took eleven thousand, right so you will know for monday equal to eleven thousand. What is the value of meter going to be? The y variable is going to be. So we will know and we will be able to make the predictions. But, but there are problems. It can cause what is called as overfitting. Overfitting. It can cause overfitting. Because as new data come in, as new data come in, right? As new data come in, the mean score that we have computed here, this mean can change with time. All right, so the next instance for so suppose it was Monday, the value could be 13,000 also. All right, in some instances, it could be 13,500 also. As time progresses, this can change. The distribution of how this y variable occurs whenever it was Mondays, whenever it was Mondays, can change with time. And as this distribution changes, as this proportions change, the ability of the machine learning model, of your machine learning model, to produce. To to produce the results accurately can keep on deteriorating over time. So you can expect the model that you build will have a very good performance on the training data set, but on new unseen data, the, the performance can slightly deteriorate for sure. So this is a known problem. In the next one, we will see how to handle this using Bayesian target encoding. See you in the next one.